arrived, I saw a young man, short, short man. And uh, when he started speaking, I realized he had a powerful voice. Um, after that, we, I decided to join the church, and uh, after that, we became close friends. And uh, a few months later, he did a great injustice to me. Um, he asked me to speak um, in the young people's service. I had never stood up before a crowd to speak in my life. And, uh, but I was excited. But when that time came and uh, I started preaching, I froze. But that young man did not give me up. He came by my side, put his hand on my shoulder, and then he preached the sermon. After that, he took me with some others and he taught us how to bring the word of God. And I believe that's the most valuable thing a Christian brother has ever done for me. And he took us step by step, teaching us you know, how to deliver the word of God. And that person is in the person of Pastor Vincent Wood. So I have great pleasure and I, I, before I, I, I continue, I spent 21 years at Emmanuel and uh, I move on and we still remain good friends. In fact, Sister Wood always says that that's the only person that can get Pastor Wood laugh. Each time we are speaking, Pastor Wood continue to laugh and we laugh and we laugh and we laugh. That means we are good friends. So it gives me great pleasure tonight to introduce to you our speaker in the person of Pastor Vincent Wood. He's the pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church. He's married. His wife is here tonight. He has two children, a, 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 a man and a woman, because they are not boys and girls anymore, but they are man and woman, and uh, they love the Lord, and he loves the Lord. And I pray tonight that you will give him your undivided attention as it comes to deliver unto you the word of God. Pass the word. Christ, 
as Lord and Savior. It is my prayer that you will accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your Master, and as your friend. He is good, he is great, he is marvelous, he is wonderful, he is superb, he is excellent, he is loving, he is kind. One of the things about serving the Lord is that you have to be constant. And I said that to say this. Many years ago, they had a birthday celebration for me. So Pastor Army was present. And he had to give a speech. And he asked, How old am I? <laughs> it seemed as though parents are always baffled concerning this cage. Now, tomorrow, God's within, will be my birthday. On Sunday, we, we always do this on Sundays at Emmanuel, inquire of those who have birthdays and then anniversaries every Sunday. So the deacon who was praying for me, in the prayer he told the Lord, does not know how old I am. I'm giving them techniques. But what I'm going to tell you, that for 60 years, Whoa. I've been a Christian. God. And in that 60 years, I have not missed church. No, 60 years. I have not missed church. Three seconds. I've always been able to be at church. Anytime I made a trip, it was not on a holiday, it was on a business, but I went to church. So only about three Sundays in 60 years, I have missed church. And God has been good. I learned that the theme of the services, I observed that they are to seek the Lord and prepare for His coming. So since I do not know how many persons are here who are Christians and non-Christians, I have to share a multi-purpose kind of thing. And I've selected Jeremiah chapter 8. Verse 20. Jeremiah 28, chapter 8, verse 20 says, The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Precious eternal God our Father, we thank you for the privilege 
that you have given to us that you come into your presence. We give you praise and thanks, the Lord, for who you are. I commit my life to you. I ask of you for your guidance and the Holy Spirit's anointing. May I be empowered, the Lord, by the blessed Holy Spirit. Minister to us, all of us, saved and unsaved, minister to us, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to share tonight on the subject, Tragedy Lies Ahead. According to an old fable, a man made an unusual agreement with death. The man told death that he would willingly accompany him when it came time to die. But only on one condition, that death would send a messenger well in advance to warn him. After discussion, the agreement was made. Weeks went away into months and months into years. Then one bitter winter evening, as the man sat alone thinking about all his material possessions, death suddenly entered the room and tapped him on the shoulder. Remember this is a fable. The man was startled and cried out in despair, You are here so soon. And without warning, I thought we had an agreement. Death replied, I've more than kept my part. I sent you many messengers. Look at yourself in the mirror, and you will see some of them. Notice your hair. Once it was full and black. Now it is thin and white. Look at the way you cock your head to listen to my voice, because you cannot hear very well. Observe how close you must get to the mirror in order to see yourself clearly. Yes, I sent many messengers through the years. I'm so sorry you are not ready for me, but the time has come to leave. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20 says to us, the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Probably you have heard much about Jeremiah. He was called the weeping prophet. Jeremiah was probably born toward the end of the reign of Manasseh, mainly about 550 BC. Jeremiah was profoundly affected by Moses, by Isaiah, by Amos, by Hosea, and by Micah. But he was especially fond of Hosea's preaching. And this is particularly evident in his early ministry. One wonders how he became so well acquainted with the labors of such men 
as those mentioned, and the Fourth the Covenant and the Royal Davidic Theologies. Probably it was through parental instruction. And that is what, in my belief, is missing in many homes today because many parents, mothers and fathers alike, do not instruct their children towards the Word of God and living a life for Him. But I believe that Jeremiah had his benefit where his parents instructed him. It might either be also by public worship, going to the tabernacle, the temple, or the synagogue, and the fellowship of the faithful, armed with a strong divine appointment, and with some needed insights and assurances, Jeremiah began a long, stormy, and eventful ministry, which was to be far reaching in its range and depth than that of any of his predecessors. Jeremiah, according to chapter 16, 1 and 2, would not be privileged to marry. And all the men that are married need to hear that. He was not privileged to marry, and he would be denied most of the joys of normal life. Increasingly, he will walk the way of a cross, and he will become one of the most colorful, most courageous, and most Christ-like character in Hebrews history. Jeremiah is his name. He is the weeping prophet, concerned, loving, understanding, and kind. He is a prophet, therefore he must speak for God. This servant of God said, my grief is beyond healing, and my heart is sick within me. And I wonder, for those of us who preach, and those of us who teach, how is our grief? How is our heart? Are we burdened for our nation? Oh. Many of us do not think about these things. Mm -hmm. But we need to ask ourselves, where is Barbados headed? Where are we going? And what is our leaders doing? I am yet to hear in a real way our leaders rising up and declaring to the nation that I have decided to make a decision to live a life for Jesus. That has not happened yet. And we need to pray for it. Because if our leaders will turn to God, the nation will be a better nation. Things will be on track. So the servant and the messenger of God said, My grief. It beyond healing and broken and suppressed and depressed and troubled and worried and my heart is sick within me. Jeremiah is heart sick and sorrow stricken and the reason for his great grief is the cry of his countrymen from the length and breadth of the land. Listen to it. They want to know why God has
forsaken them. If God departs, it means that something is wrong with our lives. Something is wrong with our nation. And I personally believe, if no one else believes that, that our nation needs a revival. Our nation needs to turn towards God. Embrace God. And ask God to take over. Because right now, God is not the supreme leader of our nation. We ask the servant idol. They want to know why God has forsaken them. God counters with an inquiry as to why. They have provoked him with their idolatry. We are serving all kinds of idols. We are serving money. We are serving cars. We are serving houses. We are serving education. We are serving degrees. We are serving position. We are serving prestige. My God. All kinds of things we are serving except the true and the living God. Jesus. And we need to ask God to forgive us. Yes. And we need to turn our attention back towards God. Oh, Jesus. God is saying to his people, the Jews, that instead of worshiping him, they have set up idols. All kinds of idols are all around the place. God said, I'm a jealous God. I only, you should say, that goes for us who are here tonight, who are Christians, whether from Emmanuel, or from Divinity, or from Bethany, or from any other church. The brother is from another church, then he got up and he identified himself. All of us need to take fresh guard. And we need to ask God to forgive us. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Mm. But he that confesseth yes, Jesus. and forsaketh the sin mm. shall have mercy. We are to mean what we say and honor the Lord. They that worship the Lord must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And in truth. The Lord said to them, that their sufferings were by an exact retribution of the infidelity. They were flirting. You cannot flirt with God. It is like what we read in Numbers. Behold your sin. Just find you out. You cannot fool God. A husband can fool a wife, and a wife can fool a husband, and children can fool parents, and parents can fool children, and friends can fool each other, but we cannot fool God. God is supreme. God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent. God knows everything. And therefore, as by the same goes, when you come into God, you have to come clean. You have to come clean. So, tonight, my word to all of us is to honor the Lord and the prison. Man sins, but doesn't want 
to be punished. He sins, yet expects to be blessed of God. I don't know where you stand on this, but I believe that blessings are conditional. The only grace that is not conditional with God is love. God loves everybody. Everybody. You're wrong, I love you. You're a prostitute, I love you. You're a murderer, I love you. But don't come with that for blessings. Blessings are conditional. So when Israel or the Israelites went contrary to the plan of God and God did not bless them, they were worried. And God had to let them know that in order to receive a blessing from me, you have to live a life to honor me. You must please me. You must walk the path that I set before you. You must do the things that are right and honorable in my sight. Yes, Lord. God speaks oftentimes to us, but man doesn't listen. Is it not true that man hears from God what he wants to hear? Now what man does not want to hear, man blocks out. But he wants to listen to Isaiah. One listen to Isaiah chapter 1. 2 and 3 and verse 20. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his honor, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people does not understand and consider. And verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. God will chastise. God will not take it as we say, sitting down. God will punish. The truth of the matter is, they were not willing to adhere to the voice of the Lord. The statement in verse 20 that I read tonight, listen to it again. The harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not saved. It was probably a popular saying that was going around. It is striking and suggestive, and to get the force of it, one has to know that the harvest and the summer were two different seasons. The former was the time for the gathering of the grain, the corn, the wheat, and the barley. The latter was the time for the gathering of the fruit. And if one of these harvests was a failure, the other was usually a success. If both were unsuccessful, start Tragedy stare the people in the face. Let's say tonight that when all things have failed, mm -hmm. it is time to take stock. Mm -hmm. The thing about this, I don't live there, you. Mm -hmm. And you don't live there, you. And you don't.
don't know the things that I do. And I don't know the things that you do. Mm -hmm. But I tell you this. God there is somebody that knows. That's right. God, God knows. Mm -hmm. So he is our judge. And he's the one that we must open our lives to, confess our sins to. And the word of God tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. You know many of us when we fall out with our friends and then he said oh, I, I forgive you but then we said to ourselves I will never forget those things that you God is not When God forgives, he, he forgives. But I always tell people, I don't know for all the Bible wizards. God does not forget. God does not God forgets to remember. He told Israel that. Don't forget to remember that I am the one that gave you houses to live in. I am the one that gave you the vineyards so you can get grapes and pomegranates and all those things. I am the one that cleared the path for you. I am the one that opened the Red Sea for you. Don't forget Word of God tells us to seek you, the Lord, while he may be found. Call your upon him while he is there. Let the people forsake their ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He will not just pardon us, but he will pardon us to overflow. Abundantly, wow. To anyone that says for the Lord, this is what the word of God said. The Lord is not slack. Concern His promises. As many persons come slack, but His long suffering towards everyone, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come 